you can have a great ad, but if the media plan's wrong, it's not going to count for anything. <laughs> Okay, so this podcast, we're going to be talking about TV advertising again, but we're going to be looking at, is TV advertising effective nowadays? Does it work? Does it work? Does it work, Matthew? You know, we've got the internet out there. You've got the internet. You can, you can target. You can spend very little money for big results. So where the hell does TV advertising fit in all that these days? Is that the question? That's the question. Me and Mark are away. Let's see, <laughs> see in half an hour. <laughs> well, the, the first thing is like online and TV obviously, you know, work to support each other. And it's pretty rare that any, particularly a client of a certain size, is going to have any kind of marketing plan that doesn't include both. Um, you just said there you can spend very little money online. In my experience, most people are spending shed loads of money online every month. Well, just to back that up, by the way, 74% of UK adults browse the internet via other devices whilst watching TV. And that that recall of the commercials isn't affected by double screening. Well, no, double screening helps you as the advertiser. Um, I, I think it's a misnomer that online advertising is cheaper than TV because both mediums you get out of it what you put into it you can do a small campaign if you want but you're going to get small results probably um, and certainly the people that do spend online the people who spend online but are resistant to TV initially it's not actually about the money and, and frankly they're usually spending way more online than they would need to for a TV campaign but it comes down to they feel confident that they can see the results of what they're spending online and that they feel concerned or skeptical about seeing the results from TV. And depending on how you run a TV campaign, you know, there can be a lot more work involved in figuring out those results. And sometimes it can even be a little bit of educated guesswork. But the, the, the truth of it is you can't, you shouldn't only think about one channel over the other. You should think about how one channel can support the other and when is the right time. And the, the basic fact is that the biggest TV ad spenders in this country in the last five to ten years have been online first brands, companies that have built their presence, reputation, customer base online and then have effectively hit a ceiling and realised if we're going to grow any further we have to now effectively go out to the mass market and be on TV. Well I think we we'll, we'll mentioned a stat in one of the previous podcasts about TV, uh, TV advertising which is basically the majority of the UK population <laughs> say that TV is the medium that will make your brand famous so online can't do that alone so that mm -hmm. definitely feeds into to what you've just said there so um, how can online and TV work together like have we got an example of how that could work well if you think of online as kind of your um ongoing presence so if you're an e-commerce brand or I don't know someone like Just Eat say you put millions in to build your brand to build awareness to get customers to get them signed up to get them using the app get them using the website that takes a process of you know years usually and then you reach a point where maybe things plateau a little bit and then you want to move on to TV to basically hit the hit the rest of the audience the, the bigger broader audience but obviously what you're doing is driving traffic to your website or to your app um, and you know effectively you might be committed to spending I'm just making numbers up but you might be committed to spend a hundred thousand a month on online advertising and you're quite happy with that because you know exactly what you're getting from it but then you might two times a year go and spend a couple hundred thousand on TV to basically boost what you're doing online and then TV has the long tail effect because it's it's a different medium you know it's very 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 easy to ignore an online advert whereas particularly if it's a good television advert even if you try not to watch it if it's on you'll pick up something of it I mean I haven't got these stats in front of me but I know that Thinkbox did uh, research where they had you know families watching TV and they were asking them about brand recall and that kind of thing and um, 
effectively <laughs> the answer was even if you're not paying attention it's still getting it, you're still soaking it up basically which is not the case with an online advert mm-hmm. but as you've just mentioned before everyone has a phone in their pocket and usually you're watching a show the adverts come on you pick your phone up to then start looking at something because you don't want to watch the adverts per se but the way that tends to work is that if something does catch your attention then you're very quickly on that website or downloading that app and that's that's where it works at, at its best together yeah and I, again going back to um one of the previous podcasts that we did we mentioned how much how important the media plan element of it is um that basically you can have a great ad but if the media plan's wrong it's not going to count for anything so if you've got a great ad but no one sees it it's probably not going to work whereas you could have quite a basic or simple commercial but if your media spends right and it's getting in front of people they're seeing it more than once yeah i mean tv is the most powerful and if you think of it as kind of a if you take online out of it for a minute and just think of the way brands have historically used radio and tv they're always on at radio at a lower cost point and radio is something that is fairly passive it's on in the car it's on in the office it's on in the shop that you're in and you know the frequency of if you hear in the advert might be a lot higher but there's no visual element to it obviously <clears throat> it's um th- th- there's just a bigger barrier to your acting on it i think Mm-hmm. So there's there's plenty of brands who long before online became a thing would be on radio all year and then they would do two or three bursts of TV, just uh, and the radio one one thing supports the other basically. So I've got another stat for you here. Mm. You ready, Mark? Mm. Yeah. Ready. Brands that utilise TV advertising as part of a market marketing campaign experience an average sixty nine percent uplift in online conversions, which is it 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 is interesting because yet yeah, TV is like the oldest by far. But it's still doing a lot of the heavy lifting there in terms of of getting people to actually do what you want them to do, buy what you want them to buy. Well, also because part of it, this goes back to the passive versus active thing. Even if you are slumped on the sofa at nine o'clock on a Wednesday night, you've still chosen to put the TV on and watch it. You're still actively engaged in it more so than if you happen to hear a radio ad or you're browsing a website and you happen to have an ad served up to you. And um, you know th- there is let's call it a psychological power in that there's a value in that so maybe a slightly you know off the beaten track question here but you said that people you turn the TV on because you want to watch it I've turned the TV on because I want to watch Coronation Street so a lot of our clients might say well what's going on in Coronation Street at the minute apart from the fact that Bill Fellows is in it is he? Mm -hmm. so it was a lie I you didn't turn out on watch Corey. Hey, I tell you what, you crumbled on a cross you examination can, there, didn't you? you? You've got us like <laughs> I don't watch Coronation Street. Not on, not when he's in it. He's got a big part by the sounds of it, and he's like to the the point where his part's been obviously a big storyline, and he's been like on the front of the TV magazines and everything. Mm-hmm. He's a great actor, Bill. Um, so fair play to him. Yeah, he's playing a. Uh, I think from what I've read, I think he's playing a suspected murderer. Right. Fits. Well, he was fantastic in Porridge, wasn't he? Oh yeah. I know that you you must you've watched that quite a few times. Not just not just watched it; I've showed it to people. <laughs> um, but yeah, th- quite often people, when they they want to advertise on TV, might have a specific TV show that they like, or they might more often they think, I think my clients watch that TV show, so can I be on after that TV show? What's the answer to that one? Well, like I said to you earlier, it's not about being on after it; it's being on in the middle of it. Which that that is the thing, you know. You've got cent- center break is the premium on on a on a prime time show. You want center break because obviously, if someone's planning to watch Coronation Street, they might not turn the TV on. This forget you know uh, live pause and all that kind of thing. Just let's assume they're watching it live. <clears throat> they might not turn the TV on until just as the program starts, and, and the second the credits roll, they might turn it off. But the will have a, a much higher chance of actually be engaging with a centre break even if they're actually going to make a cup of tea and it's still on the background so that that's the that's the plum spot the centre break spot and obviously then you've got the prime time schedule which is technically prime time I think starts at 5.30 but realistically you're talking kind of 7 or 10 prime time and you want to be in, in the middle of something and the answer is yes uh, of course you can do that obviously uh, to use a, an example um, that everyone I think will have seen you know 
car manufacturers in particular were very fond of kind of picking the first slot in a break so you'd come out of a program particularly football into a car advert which might be a 30 second version and then the break would play out and then they would recall it with a 10 second ad at the end to remind you of the one that you saw at the start and you know that was obviously they were picking those spots and paying a premium for them but yeah all things are possible haven't we just had a client pay for that premium spot yeah, they um, they had worked out <coughs> what their audience profile was, which was fifty plus women, daytime TV, very specific kind of programming, and all of their campaign went into that, apart from the very first one, which went out Centre Brig and Emmerdale, which was also it did fit with their audience profile, but it just gave them a chance to, you know, tell tell their audience that hey, we've got this uh, this cool campaign kicking off, and you can see it tonight in the in the middle of Emmerdale, you know. And is there any any stats back from that yet, or is that too early to? Um, to not not stats per se, but I spoke to them about halfway through the campaign. The campaign only ran for two weeks. They're obviously just a, a local company with a single site retail, and um, halfway through the campaign, they said they'd had three or four people already come in and say, "I've seen your advert. That's why I'm here." Which, as I think we mentioned in the previous one, you know, we've we've had that kind of anecdotal feedback from other, particularly single site local retailers. Um, and you know, rel- relatively, they're not spending huge amounts to get that campaign out there, and clearly, it's working. Mm-hmm. Well, I've got a stat for you, Mark. If you are hungry for I for am. more stats, more. Um, He's hungry for more stats and more topic crisps. T- TV advertising. I have a topic crisp. <laughs> I'm all out. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said you did. I didn't see you eat it, but I be- you know, <laughs> I don't think so. TV advertising uh, drives a higher return on investment than any other media. Still, so uh, generating one pound seventy three pence for every one pound spent in the short term and four pound twenty longer term. So, which to go back to something you said before, and I'm talking about this from the audience perspective, I still think there is this general idea that well, online advertising is easy and cheap, TV advertising is difficult and expensive. I'm not saying either of those things are true, but that perception is out there in the amongst the audience, and that's why it, it's good for building confidence in brands. I think people might have cottoned on to the fact that uh, pay-per-click isn't cheap. Is it? Because uh, it's not, is it? You might have s- certain niche things where it works I and you can get good results for, well, w- for not a huge Really amount. what I mean is, you know, you could go home tonight and you could set up a, a pay-per-click campaign if you wanted and you could set it to be £1 a day. You could do that. You wouldn't get many results, but that's achievable. You can't yet go and do that for TV. You might be able to do in the future, but you can't yet. The only PPC I've set up is uh, is is just uh, for our company name because there's so many of our competitors that oh, are thought, bidding thought, on it at the moment because for some reason. I thought you'd set up for Kev's Dildo Emporium. What are you Dot com. Oh, right. sorry, sorry. That, that's what <laughs> that, that explains spending. a lot. Get that spending. explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I need thought a I was of, on the wrong site. Need a couple of fresh ones here. <laughs> You send them in discreet <laughs> packaging, don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and on my credit card, it just says, like, KDE or something. Yeah, very discreet. I just have the silhouette of the product on the side <laughs> of the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With uh, the sticker with your name in. <laughs> well, uh, point it's 13. Side, it's got to have a ruler. <laughs> it's going to mark off how long it is. <laughs> you bought it. You know how long it is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so moving off dildos... And back onto what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking stomach does it as well. <laughs> um, that is a carry on <laughs> stomach. That <laughs> There's more coming. Can we come on, get through all this. <laughs> get through this. Yeah, I yeah, hope everyone's enjoying. <laughs> Let's just get through this. <laughs> just get my heads down and get through it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was one of the. The, the takeaways I had from the previous podcast is that it's still the most trusted mm-hmm. form of uh, advertising, even both, you know, newspapers as well. I think that was the stat that you gave, yeah. which is like, oh, well, that's great for like both the client and the consumer. Mm-hmm. The well, I, I, to, to rephrase what I was saying before, you know, the barrier to entry for TV or people's perceived barrier to entry definitely feeds into that. To that, to that trustability it's like well if you're on TV and as I spoke about before if you're on TV you're telling the truth in the first place so that helps with the with the uh, trust but 
there is just this idea that if you're on there, you can afford to be on there, then you know you must be worth you know paying attention to. So speaking of affordability of the commercials, because you know it's obviously linked with the return that you want to get from it. Um, in terms of media buying, so we've kind of touched on this on a different podcast, but um, you're going to start hearing words like impression and TVR, and they're obviously heavily linked with how much it's going to cost for, because let's face it, it's going to cost you more to be on, a lot more to be on in the middle of Coronation Street than it's going to cost to be on at 4 o'clock in the morning on the same channel. Well, the cost for that one Emmerdale spot was basically 10% of the entire campaign. So yeah. So um, you want in a, a noise from me there? No, no, it's fine. Good. Yeah, we'll, we'll just double in later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> Wait, carry on. Yeah. So do you want to explain what an impression is first? Uh, no. What okay. I'll do instead is I'll see. Thanks you. for joining, my everyone. <laughs> <laughs> see you on. See you next time. <laughs> no, what I was going to say was. TVRs and impressions are the same thing in that they're both measurements of the audience. The key difference is an impression is a result. That's you saying it has been served up to someone X number of times, whereas a TVR is ultimately an educated guess. The TVR stands for TV rating. So obviously, you know, the 7.30 Emmerdale broadcast is much higher rated than, I don't know, Dickinson's Real Deal. That's on at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so you pay more to be in it. So <clears throat> a TVR is a measurement of that perceived audience, and because we're still working with you know ratings panels, so basically a small sample is taken and then extrapolated from that is the ultimate number. So it's an educated guess, it's a good guess, but it's not a hard number as opposed to an impression, which is when if you deliver a report at the end of a campaign or if you buy a certain number of impressions, that is what you are getting. You went a bit Roy Walker there, did I? Nearly, yeah, nearly. Do you think that's that's come about quite recently though? Because just thinking back to how TV was um, <coughs> before the internet, before that kind of got. So before like more of the digital age that we've got for tracking uh, people that are watching it, different categories, age, you know, all that kind of thing. What what they're going to buy? Wasn't the one box in in a region? That was like, and if that person turned over the channel, that's what it was like. Thousands of people's like. Well, that's still what they do now. But isn't it? It's it's more sophisticated than that, isn't it? Not much. No. <laughs> that was a new one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I well, think well, it, it will become more sophisticated. So it sounds like it's more sophisticated. ITV are going to launch ITV X imminently. That the you know all hands at the pump getting it out in time for the World Cup, and I think at some point, and this might be 10 years down the line, 15, who knows, but I think at some point, they'll basically switch off the traditional channel and everyone will watch ITV through ITVX because that way they know exactly who everyone is, what they're watching and can really tailor their, their output and there is no guesswork anymore, but until something like that happens with every channel then there's always going to be this um, I mean, it, it's a tried and tested system. It's it's been in place for decades, and you know it, it seems to work. This idea of taking a sample of viewers and then extrapolating from it, but that's it's still used. Yeah, I don't know if it was more of like a kind of a a coming of age of the of the two streams, really, like broadcast advertising on tr traditional TV, maybe dipped at some point, maybe with the the ability to advertise more online and and and. It, <coughs> I, I certainly feel that that was the case. Maybe like TV, it wasn't for people advertising on TV anymore. It wasn't like trusted. There was this new thing, this new internet that was taking over. People kind of went over to that, and over time they've kind of they've come together more. They've connected more, like complemented each other. I don't know because I distinctly remember people, yeah, show my age, um, who told me very solemnly that they would never put their credit card information into a, a website. Uh, you know that I'll just get my money stolen. I don't trust it, and obviously now you know you can. I don't know can you do it on your watch even, but you can definitely pull your phone out your pocket and pretty much buy anything you want now. You know, so I think it's attitudes change, but also generations skip that. So you know you've got the majority of people who are working in online marketing now are probably, and I've got no stat to back this up, but anecdotally I would say we're going to be between twenty five and thirty five. 
and mostly all they've known in their life is being connected to the internet and that's just the thing you know mm -hmm. so yeah. i think when we're talking about it we can we, we see where the change was but i think a lot of you know marketing managers and the like it's just that's just what they've grown up with it's like we advertise online that's where people are so speaking of change you've you've just dropped itvx there um do we need to go like that one too <laughs> I'll ask them next week. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> when you got your tux on, <laughs> your penguin suit. Taken out again. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still got wine stains from the last event. Um, so when we think of TV commercials, we do still think of traditional broadcast <coughs> television, where you've got regional channels that show a portion of uh, national commercials and then a small portion of uh, regional ones that are kind of put in there as well um, but that's already started to change hasn't it a little bit um, Sky have had a, a system for a while now where specific commercials are downloaded to that user's box mm -hmm. based on data that Sky have on, on that person so very exactly like online advertising where it's tar more targeted um, definitely than traditional. Um, so how long has Ad Sm AdSmart been around now? Launched at the start of 2014, so coming up nine years. Nine years. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Because you're a little bit of an expert, really, in Sky AdSmart and been quite uh, working oh, closely with them for. I wouldn't claim to be an expert. Yeah. Um, well, it, not to kind of go back over all ground, but it, it, it's a they call it addressable TV. It's targeted advertising. Like you said, <coughs> you build an audience profile the same way you do with an online campaign. So you say, I want it to be, you know, I want this ad to be seen in houses in this postcode area, which uh, have families with children under this age because, you know, I'm going to advertise this baby product to them or this family friendly holiday or whatever it might be. Um, so, you know, that, that happens to be your setup. So you're sat at home watching Sky and you see that advert. Whereas I'm next door with no kids, significantly younger, and uh, <laughs> I get a much different advert that's, you know, telling me to go and buy some beer or something and go and have a good time, you know, because I'm footloose and fancy free. Whereas I'm getting sold, like, you know, life pensions, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Funeral. funeral plans, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. yeah but um, ITVX is going to kind of build on that, if you like. Obviously, it's a separate system, but. Sky, this time last year, I think it was, launched Sky Glass, which was their own TV. Now, on the surface, you go, right, well, everyone's got a TV that's got a bunch of apps in it, a smart TV, so what? But obviously the, the innovation from them was you don't need Sky Box anymore. So you're getting all these Sky services, but they're just getting piping through your TV. That's the way things are going to go, and that's why ATVX is what it is, and that's why eventually you won't be picking channels as much as you'd be opening the Channel 4 app or the Channel 5 app or whatever. And it's all about, you know, being able to tailor the audience profile and serve you a different advert that suits your needs compared to your neighbour next door. And no doubt, eventually, you'll be downstairs watching the main TV and you'll see one advert and the kids will be upstairs watching their TV and they'll see a different advert. That's just the way it's going. So as someone, a potential client that's looking to advertise, that's good news absolutely it's scary but yeah it's good news um, but it definitely puts a different slant on TV like, as in like thinking of TV as traditional advertising well, yeah uh, because the, the convergence between um, how you buy plan and buy an online campaign and what TV can deliver is you know the, the Venn diagram is constantly the two the two circles are constantly coming closer together and they will eventually just overlap mm -hmm. well what's the main question this podcast. Does TV advertising work? Well, I was just going to point out that it must do because we built a successful business <laughs> around it. <laughs> so if we're still <coughs> producing TV commercials and customers are still clients are still well, yeah, okay. Back, so uh, um, uh, we're I we're filthy rich <laughs> off it. So <laughs> I'm not saying we're filthy rich, <laughs> uh, but what I'm saying is, as an example, does TV advertising still work? The, the truth of it is, like, Thinkbox is, is a very good organization. They put a lot of data out. I mean, that, that is why they exist. 
they exist to promote television advertising, but they put a lot of effort into, you know, cast the net far and wide. They do a lot of different research and training. And we should link people to, you know, they have these charts and things like that publicly available. But, you know, y you can see that despite the massive proliferation of people viewing on demand and specifically viewing on demand through, up until now, non-ad services such as Netflix, Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. Even though that has taken a chunk out of the audience, it it hasn't really changed that much. It's you know TV's viewing numbers, its position that you know they call it the um what they call it like the daily video diet or whatever. So you know so undoubtedly Kev's kids daily video diet is going to largely be YouTube. That's fine, but there's still going to be some TV in there even at that age. And then anyone who's kind of, you know, of adult age, TV is still the biggest chunk of that. It has decreased a little bit, but it's still the biggest chunk. And you can look at that over a period of years and, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. But as it stands, as I said before, there's a reason why historically over the last few years, the biggest spenders on TV have been brands that have, before they've gone on TV, just purely done online and built a very successful business. Mm -hmm. And now they go on TV. Definitely works. Well, there you go. There's there's the summary for you. It definitely works. Can't argue. Can't argue with that. You, you really can't. Good. Yeah. <laughs> don't. Okay. Well don't then. Well, <laughs> we can end this one here then. Champion. And say, does TV advertising work? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See <does>. you next <laughs> time. <laughs>Thanks for listening to or watching the tripod um obviously this is new for us we're trying to build a bit of an audience here so it'll be very helpful if you could subscribe to the channel and if you do so before the end of november 2022 uh, we'll pick a name out at random and we'll send you some your film merch